Welcome. Today is Monday, February 25th. Matt Muse kicked the bug, and we're back, baby. Double Minor joins the show to talk NHL and how Hollywood is getting into the hockey films. AB wants out of Pittsburgh, and the Steelers won't trade him to just anywhere. We'll talk brute IPAs, basketball, and give you our top six Michigan vacation destinations. Let's go. This is the Matt Muse Show with Matt Hunsler and Adam Musinski. The eagle has landed. <sighs> well, we made it. That was a rough, rough couple days for us. Yeah. I so obviously we were off last week. We apologize, but you know when you get the flu, you you really shouldn't be around people, and that's what happened to us. I literally started getting sick Sunday night, and mid Monday morning I was fine. It came and went that fast, and then Matt got sick, and here we are. I didn't have the flu. I like cold, and the Zycam stuff. You squirt up my nose every three hours. There's got to be something terrible in it for you because it made my eyes water and my nostrils sting, but my cold didn't last as long. So uh, I feel better. Don't really have much of a voice. Might uh, <coughs> a few times. But, no, uh, no one listens to you anyways, so it's okay. Yes, I am the uh, comic relief of the show. Oh, well, shoot. I better step it up then. <laughs> <laughs> that's true you're not really good at comedy either. <laughs> no i didn't know that's why i was here <laughs> um all right we'll get down to business we got a lot to get through let's get down to question of the podcast mulan mulan i have not watched mulan in eons every time somebody says let's get down to business i sing the song let's get down to business nice to defeat the huns nice not really i mean it's Okay. It's a scary place inside this mind of mine. It is. I'm finding that out as we go through the show. <laughs> my, psychi- right. my psychiatrist won't see me anymore. <laughs> I don't blame him or her. Them. It was many, many <laughs> psychiatry. Psychiatry. Yeah. Nice. You change the end. It's like octopi. Octopi. It's not octopuses. It's octopi. What else ends in I? Sky. Well, like multiples. Oh, something else has um, to. Uh, yeah, that yeah. Good? Um, you think oh, of that? Ooh, I think it's platypi. No, it's not platypi. It's definitely platypuses. I don't know. Think about that. Um, oh. Question of the podcast: uh, We want to know winter or summer. Really simple. Um, and kind of to my surprise, we had a hundred percent say summer. <laughs> No one likes winter, and that's okay. Winter sucks. <laughs> exactly. I bet you if we asked the same question in August, though, everybody <laughs> would say winter. Let's let's write this down. We're doing that. <laughs> winter or summer in August. That's definitely going to happen. Um, this question of the podcast is brought to you by Yeti. Yes, Yeti. Um, there's yes, an Amazon link. Yeti. Amazon link in the episode description. Go to it. You get a 14-ounce stainless steel vacuum-sealed insulated mug with lid. For only $24.99, you can also find all our featured products at metmuse.com. Click on the featured products link on the top of the page, and each of them will be there listed by the episode that they were featured on. So, Do you know what a succubus is? No, but I'm assuming it's a succubi if it's plural. Yes. <laughs> Ooh. What is it? You can't, you can't just do that. You can't, do you know what it is? No, I don't, but I think it's plural. Then not tell me what it is. What the hell is it? Oh, so a succubus is like a uh, demon. I think it's a demon. It might be a ghost. It's usually a woman that uh, convinces a man to like come to them and then kills them. That's sort of the gist of it. And I'm sure somebody out there can give us a butch letter, dec- or uh, <laughs> I not say declaration, but definition. Um. <laughs> So, stimuli, that's a really good one. We should have known that one. Ooh, yeah. And then, it's not rhombuses, it's rhombi. So, you have have more than one rhombi. You have a rhombus there and a rhombus there. They then become rhombi. So, we got a movie for Jameson called Learn with Elmo or something. And he's obsessed with it. And one of them is the Shapobots. And they turn into different shapes. 
and they talk about rhombuses and rhombis or whatever you say it. I'm like, dude, the kid's two. And he knows what a stop sign is now. Yeah. Um, and it's definitely platypi, not platypuses. <laughs> <laughs> you were wrong. No, I was right. And then I second guess me. Yeah, yeah, so you were wrong. Melanie says she likes winter better, or likes winter. She just likes summer slightly better. Okay, so we don't hate winter. We just like summer slightly better 100% of the time. <laughs> I love summer. Winter can go away. You know what's cool about winter? Hockey. You know what's awesome about hockey? Double minor. What's up, man? What's going on, guys? <clears throat> Not a whole lot. How are you? Good. Um... The word you were looking for was cacti, by the way. Cacti. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> man. <laughs> Money. Yet. That's totally yeah, true, too. And, and succubi. I know a few of them. I don't know the definition, <laughs> but I know a few, a few of those. So, uh, will they start with the letter J? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and a stop sign is not a rhombus, by the way. Rhombus only has four sides. That's an octa guy you're looking for. Octa guy. You're an octa guy. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> then why would they... Well, romb, what do they need a rhombus for? And I'm trying to think why they needed a rhombus on the show. Because it's a shape. It's well, a I show know about why. shapes. That's exactly why they need a rhombus on the show. That, that, geez, that movie gets stuck in my head all the time. It's bad. Let's get down to business. Elmo and you, you, and you. Talk you. to Jared. All right. All-Star Game, NHL All-Star Game came and went. A format is completely different than every other All-Star Game in the aspect of they basically changed the game and playing three-on-three versus five-on-five. What What are your thoughts on it? You're a hockey guy. Um, do you like it? Do you dislike it? Would you rather see him play five-on-five, or do you like the three-on-three tournament? Uh, I hate the three-on-three. I hate the three-on-three overtime that they do. It's... I get it. It showcases speed and skill, especially in an all-star game where that might be, you know, that's hockey's not the most popular sport. So they're trying to get more scoring and things like that. So I get why they do it. I just, I find it kind of boring myself. Um, Other than that, I still, there's a lot of things I do like about it. You know, the winning team gets a million dollars to donate towards charity and uh, they started the whole idea. I think the NBA started doing it after the NHL where they have a captain and then they pick a team. I don't know if they still do that anymore or not, but um, I know they don't do it in the NHL, but I thought the NBA picked it up for a year and then it didn't work or something like They're that. They're still doing it. Do they? Yeah. Yep. yep. LeBron um, James uh, picked like 80% players whose about to, about the contracts to be, are about to expire. Yeah, about to be a free agent. <laughs> <laughs> but he's not taking yeah, it no, well. I, yeah, and lastly, with the All Star Game, I like that you know Ovechkin said, "Hey, I'm not going," and they slapped him with a game suspension because he didn't go. Because you know it's for the fans and this and that. I understand the players want to go home and be with their families, but you know there's got to be some sort of consequence. So I'm glad they hold them accountable. Well, if you want to go home and be with your families, don't be so good at hockey. I mean, fair trade off, right? That's there. why right. I spend a lot of time with my family because I'm not good at hockey at all. Right, I'm home. I'm home right now. Those are the only two things you can be: good at hockey and away from your family, or with your family and bad at hockey. That is the defining moments of life. Right. Exactly. Um. <laughs> so uh, this is this is really going to touch home for you, Jared. I think uh, this question here is something I've been pondering for two weeks now. Um, and as as we all know, you're a huge Red Wings fan. What are your thoughts of uh, Darren Elliott leaving Fox Sports Detroit? Old Darren, uh, <laughs> I think we've talked about him before. He does. don't don't hold anything back here. Oh yeah, no. Uh, actually, I have had the honor of meeting him one time. I told you guys that story. I won't go into detail on here, but uh, really, really nice guy, and I'm happy that he took the job because it's kind of a no brainer. He went to Vegas to be the head of their uh, hockey programming and facility operations. And then he's going to do some of their, like, uh, like some directing of their youth programs, which he did in Detroit too. And, you know, people had nothing good to say about him. And I, but 
from a broadcasting standpoint, I thought he was terrible. <laughs> there it is. But speaking, <laughs> but speaking of terrible, can we take a second to appreciate the fact that Larry Murphy is back doing broadcasting for <laughs> the Red Wings? Now. Pay homage, to Murph. Yeah, All right. Hey, he's a he's a Hall of Famer. He brought two cups here. I you know I appreciate that, but I, I think they could have found someone better. Should have had double minor. Too bad he's wrapped up in a contract with Matt Muse. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I've got that his... contract with you guys holding me back. Yeah. It's a legally binding word of mouth contract. I bought him a Corona once and he's stuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. So trade deadline uh, was today at 4 o'clock. Uh, Wings made some moves. Got rid of Nyquist. Um, did not move Howard. Um, what other big moves did you see that happened and things that you thought would happen that did not? Uh, one that kind of surprised me that didn't happen was the Howard thing. Everyone seemed to think he was going, he was going. But only one goalie got moved and out of 25 players got traded today or leading up to it and then mm-hmm. today. Um, I thought Howard was going to go, but the goalie market just kind of fell through. Uh, Red Wings also got rid of Nick Jensen, the young defenseman. Um, But we got another young defenseman in return, uh, Madison Bowie from Washington. So I think with both of the trades Detroit did make, they got, I'd give them like a C plus. They did okay as far as what they're going to get in return. But Mm -hmm. Jensen signed a monster contract with Washington 10 minutes after he got traded there four years 10 mil uh, i think it's a little absurd but maybe they see something that we didn't see for the last three years i don't know right um as far as around the league uh probably the biggest trade was the mark stone went from ottawa to vegas and then signed a eight year 76 million dollar extension so they're going all in on him yeah uh, other than that there's a lot of other big names matt deshane got traded uh, my favorite trade was Kevin Hayes from the Rangers went to Winnipeg. I don't think Winnipeg needed any help, but I think didn't one of you guys pick Winnipeg to win the cup? Not I. It was probably me. I, went, uh, uh, some, yeah. I don't know. So that's going to help out. It was um, probably me. <laughs> I don't know. Um, a good trade. A good trade turned bad. Matt Zuccarello from the Rangers went to Dallas, and in his first game, he blocked his shot and broke his arm. So he's out <laughs> for four weeks. Um, I was uh, I was listening to an interview not that long ago with um, I want to say it might have been Larry Murphy, and he sort of said how. A lot of these players, they tend to survive trade deadlines. And you don't think us on the outside looking in, not just for hockey, but all sports, all professional sports, we want our team to be the best. We want them to wheel and deal all these players and say, oh, trade this guy for this guy, trade this guy for these prospects. We oftentimes forget that they are humans, that they're people with families, with roots and communities, et cetera, et cetera. So for these players to come to this trade deadline, I mean, it's – it can be scary. I mean, mm-hmm. it really can be scary. I mean, Gus Nyquist, he was with the he was with the Wings for eight years. And all of a sudden, well, now he's gone. Well, he has to up and move and replant his roots in a new community. And, and this happens time and time again. You look at those players who get traded every year, every other year, and especially like baseball. It's, it's tough. It's got to be tough for these people. But we often visualize them as assets. We don't visualize them as human beings. It's, it's odd to think about. That's sports. Yep. No, it absolutely is. Yeah. And, and um, like, you think of the Wings. I mean, the Wings were a team that people did not want to leave. Like, when the trade deadline came, like, oh, crap, is this my time? My time up? I'm leaving this prestigious organization, and who knows where the hell I'm going to end up. But now we're at this point where the Wings are rebuilding. So it's the exact opposite. Who's coming to the Wings? Who do we want at the Wings? So we're just trying to pull in all these young people we can in the hopes of having a good future again. But... They're assets. They're absolutely assets to us, and that's it. It's odd. It's really odd. Right, and there were a few, I was reading today, there were a few teams interested in Cronwall, given that he's a veteran and last year of his contract, and 
I guess Ken Holland approached him today and said, if you want to go, you can go. And he said, no, I want to stay here. So I thought that was kind of a class act on Holland's movie. He doesn't do too many of those. So, Yeah, and especially with Cronwall, though. He's been with the Wings for so long. And Holland giving him the option, yeah, that's cool. And then him saying, no, you know, I, I've done enough here in Detroit. I kind of want to finish my tenure with the Wings here and call it, call it a career. I think that doesn't happen too often, especially late in careers. People just want to keep winning. So, um, so can the Wings keep up the losing and secure the number one pick and get Jack Hughes? Well, are I they think they can keep losing. Up? That's that's for sure. <laughs> I don't know if it's, <laughs> if they can secure the number one pick. Ottawa sent away almost every decent player they had during the trade deadline. So, and they were already in last place, but. If uh, <clears throat> if Bernier continues to start in that for us, it could get pretty ugly. But, I mean, in all optimism, if we get a top three pick, that would be awesome. And if we get first pick, if we don't take Jack Hughes, we're, we're foolish. But, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, no, the draft next year is actually a pretty deep draft. So I think we'll be all right. We've got lots of picks, too. So Yeah, we got six second-round picks over the next two years. Yep. So definitely a lot, lot of opportunity. We can package those together. We can move up into the first. We can keep where they're at because there's still good quality players there in the second round. So a lot of uh, positive future thoughts going on with the Wings. This uh, Honestly, this trade deadline and then going into the potential draft reminds me a lot of what hockey trade deadline and drafts used to be like 10, 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's you look over the last decade and it's been – relatively boring there's been one to two standout players and that's it just a few moves at the end of the trade deadline and this year's been exciting yeah like remember when chris chelios was traded to the wings from the blackhawks and everyone just like blew up yeah and that's it, kind of getting back to that possibility of those things happening again yeah <laughs> totally so philip zadina made his uh much anticipated nhl debut on sunday uh, 10 minutes, just over 10 minutes, no goals, uh, minus one in the point category. Um, again, I'm not a huge hockey guy, so I can't look at his game and tell you what I saw. Uh, did you see anything that gave you any promise of the future? Uh, I watched him. I thought he looked good. He's going to be playing nine games because if he plays 10, then he starts his rookie contract. So they're yeah. going to send him back down after nine. But... Um, no, he was fast and looked like he had a bunch of energy, and they gave him some time with Larkin and Anthony Ciu. And so if we keep having young guys who are fast and like to throw the body around, who knows what could happen. But he's definitely a he's definitely a goal scorer. They just, you know, that transition from the AHL to the NHL is tough. So we'll see what happens. But I thought he looked good. Good. I did too. I'm glad I thought the same thing as you. I say I watched <laughs> it. I was like, wow, he's really good, but... Again, I'm not a hockey expert like our good friend Double Miner. <laughs> That's why we have him on the show. <laughs> exactly. All yeah. right. Now, a little, little Hollywood, a little cinematography here for you, Jared. Um, first off, how pumped are you for the Terry Sawcheck movie? Goalie? Is that what it's called? Yeah, it's called Goalie. Goalie. It's called Goalie, and I'll be honest, I didn't even know they were making it until you guys brought it up. <laughs> oh, really? And so I, I did some I did some research on it and the trailer looks awesome. They got Kevin Pollock in the movie. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how they pulled that off, but um based on the trailer it looks like it's gonna be to a wider audience than just like a Red Wings fan or a hockey fan in general. Yeah. And then I started reading a little bit about his life and it should be good. He was kind of a wild man, so <laughs> Yeah, like all the but, stories I've always heard is just his playing career and his career obviously with the the Red Wings, and then, like you said, I saw the trailer for the movie, and all of a sudden, like, looking into a few things, I'm like, wow, this is, like, definitely, like you were saying, beyond hockey. It's definitely going to reach a broader audience than just the sports fans. Absolutely. Um, and now something more uh, close to home for us as far as documentary base hitting the sports fans. Russian 5. It's a uh, movie uh, set to appear statewide March 22nd. Yeah, I'm definitely excited about that. Uh, I never read the book. I know I you, you read, recommended so. it big time. Yes, I've read uh, it. You said, said it was great. 
Uh, I haven't watched the trailer, but I've been doing I don't even know if there is a trailer because I purposely don't want to see one. I just kind of <laughs> want to go see it. My mom already bought a bunch of tickets nice. for the showing in Birch Run. So, yeah, we're going to go check that out. Um, we all grew up watching them play, and I've heard stories of how they had to, like, smuggle themselves out of Russia and things like that. So it would be cool, if, you know, depending on how deep they go in this bio piece. But I'm excited for it. Right before we started the show, Shana texted me and said, hey, what are you doing March 22nd? I said, I don't know why. You want to go see the Russian 5 movie? I'm like, yeah. So I think I'm going. Nice. I'm excited. <laughs> I got to buy tickets. <laughs> got to get there. Yeah, I know Bertrand, it's like the 22nd through the 27th or 21st through the 27th, and it's something like that. I don't know how many showings they're doing per day, but that's the only one I've heard of. Somebody said Saginaw, but I'm not sure. I know Midland for sure. They're doing it too. I'm excited. Yes, me too. Yeah. And the Bob Probert movie just came out too, oh, but right. I have yet to watch that. I did get a link to stream it online, but I haven't watched it yet. Legally, of course, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't condone illegal streaming. <laughs> Only. Unless it results in me making money. <laughs> right. Exactly. All right, man. Thanks. We'll let you get back to your rum and cokes. Thanks for coming on. We'll talk to you soon. Rum and diet. <laughs> rum and diet. Rum and yeah. diet. Rum and diet. Talk to you, buddy. Thanks, dude. See you guys. So, uh, hockey's fun. I wish I could skate. Me too. You wish I could skate? Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to skate. I probably wouldn't be so fat. My knees would <laughs> buckle and I'd die. Speaking of which, I don't remember who it was, but I saw a gruesome hockey injury yesterday, I think it was. And it was in the NHL. His skate got caught around some guy's stick blade. He snapped his ankle in half. It was wicked. That's the whole Wicked. Story. My shoulder hurts. Why does your shoulder hurt, man? Well, I played in a volleyball tournament over the weekend. Wait, you were active? Yeah, I, I am a relatively active person. I just don't look it. I shouldn't talk. You're way more active than I am. Yeah, my wife even got me this fancy watch that tells me how fat I'm not being. <laughs> it also gives me reminders to stand up and move around if I sit too long. So that's neat. How does that work when you're driving all day? It's all right, because I get up enough. I mean, it's after like a half hour, it tells me I'm sure it'll do it during the show. <laughs> um, but anyway, I played in a volleyball tournament over the weekend, and we had a co-ed tournament on Saturday, and uh, we played really well. Didn't fare too well in the standings, but we played really well. On Sunday, we had a men's tournament, and it got really intense, and every game that we lost, we lost by three or less points, and it's a win by two, like, sets, and... Uh, um, I'm I'm tired, man. I'm really, really tired and sore, and my shoulder hurts. <laughs> and I just this is my my opportunity to complain, and I so, appreciate you and everybody listening. <laughs> we all love hearing Matt complain. That's all he does all day is complain, 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 oh, complain, complain. All complain. I do all day. Sometimes I take a drink of water or something, and then I get back to it. You got an award at work the other day. And you were sitting up there like, no, I'm mad. I, this I chick's too big, mad. won't fit in my car. <laughs> <laughs> I was not mad. That um, was, was, was my look of appreciation and surprise. Okay. Congrats on that, very, very similar to my girl, a mad look, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> so you played good. I'm, I'm going to summarize this. Played good. Didn't play good enough. You played hard. You played too hard. Had fun. And you, have, had oh, fun. you did have fun. Did have fun. You had fun. Okay. So that was a positive then. Yeah. Yeah, had fun. Well, um, we were uh, the second worst men's team, but there was only four teams <laughs> oh, in the tournament. Someone was worse. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We played 22 games in two days. A lot of volleyball, man. As you said before, 22 of one thing. Is I can't a lot walk of 22 steps without sitting down. Luckily, I can keep track of that now. On my so when you get to 21, spot. you can sit down? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I don't want to go too far. If I ever go someplace that has 22 steps, it's, it's just a disaster. So 20. So yeah, that was that was my weekend. Nice, it was, it was exciting. Um, but moving on to people that matter more than me because they're worth a hundred times more than I am. <laughs> Antonio Brown, uh, your your man, your boy, your hero. Yeah. Well, I don't know if I'd say hero. You're. I'm, I'm a fan. You're my boy. Yeah, my boy. I feel my boy. Your homie. 
Yeah, he's ready to move on. Um, he tweeted that a while ago. Um, after nine years, time to move forward. Uh, Steelers, and he met with the Rooney family and everything, and they finally said, sure, you know, we'll trade you. Um, obviously, they got to find someone to take his contract and everything, but um, they're going to trade him. Won't be to any AFC North team or the Patriots. That's their plan. Um, good luck, Steelers. I don't know how well that'll work out, but uh, sometimes you got to take what you can get. Uh, maybe somehow they can work it out. I know they've had a, a lot of open dialogue uh, between everyone in that organization. Maybe it'll end up working. Are you trying to act like you're standing up right now <laughs> with your watch? Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, Shayna just said something to me on the, on the Facebooks. And she asked, <laughs> do I need to have an even number of steps on my watch? I didn't think about it till now. Now I'm always going to have to have an even number of steps in my watch. I'm trying to make my watch think I'm walking. I'll sit in my, my my stool here, and it's it's not it's smarter than me. This smart watch is very very smart. And I'm currently at eight thousand seven hundred and seventeen steps. So uh, that's an odd number. Well, keep doing this, and maybe you can get some more. <laughs> Start dancing around. <laughs> um, and the other news out of the Steelers camp is uh, Le'Veon Bell. They are not going to franchise tag him, so he's going to be a free agent. Um, lots of possibilities where he'll end up. Um, obviously, rumors will keep going until what's the uh, June first year date or something like that, or May first. I can't remember when they start signing free agents, but that'll all come down the pipeline, and I'm sure we'll keep you updated on that. Um, so, uh, where's your money at? Where are they going to end up? I'm I'm still saying Antonio's going to going. He's either going to stay in Pittsburgh, or go to San Fran. Um, he he's owed a lot of money, and Pittsburgh. They can't just release him because they're still going to have that dead cap hit of $26 million. Uh, Le'Veon Bell, uh, I've heard New York, uh, Colts, Lions possibly. I think it's going to be someone with a quarterback who just needs that one extra piece. That's the only reason I'm thinking the Colts, is just, if they get Le'Veon Bell, I mean, they're Super Bowl ready. So I'm going to go, I'll give you two teams for each. Antonio Brown's either going to stay with Pittsburgh or for some reason go to San Fran. Le'Veon Bell, I'm going to say Colts. Or, hell, I'll say Lions. Why not? Let's put us in the link. Into the talk. Sure. I mean, sure, sure. I don't think you're right. But sure. well, okay, who do you got? Uh, Le'Veon Bell is going to end up New York Giants. Why? Yeah. They have, what's his face from Penn State? Oh, true. I meant uh, Antonio Brown's going to end up in New York Giants. With Odell? Yep. That'd be sick. Yep. That'd, help. I forget <laughs> That'd be a hell of a sideline to watch. I forget what Steeler we're talking about here. I mean, they're not really paying for anybody right now. They that's, got Odell, that's it. That's true. And Saquon Barkley. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he, but he's he's still so young. I mean, his contract isn't mm-hmm. really that big. Um, so I can see him going there. And uh, uh, Le'Veon's going to end up. Le'Veon's going to end up. <laughs> Say it again, it might come true. <laughs> Le'Veon's going to end up. Le'Veon's going to end up. Ready for this? I'm ready for it. Oakland. Um, I can see that. I can see that for sure. And they're going to win a Super Bowl. This year? Two years. Two years? Okay. Two years. Two years. Um, Space Jam 2. I'm a huge fan of Space Jam 1. It starts filming this summer. Um, releases two years down the road now. Um, but uh, again, nothing's in uh, stone yet. Uh, I was thinking Kyrie Irving, James Harden, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Joel Embiid, and Boban Marjanovic uh, for the Monstars. And the only one I'm really sure of is Boban, just because he's a funny looking dude. I think he can make the blue guy pretty much perfect. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even need makeup. <laughs> no, no, like, seriously. Just go stand out there, man. <laughs> he, he's a funny looking dude. I think that would completely make sense, in my opinion. So. <laughs> Good. I was really wondering what your opinion was for uh, Space Jam 2. All right, coming up, we got Beer of the Podcast. We talk some basketball, three on three tournaments, top six Michigan vacation destination, dry beers, and fat beers.
All right. We are back, and we know what that beautiful sound is. Beer the podcast time. Yay. You got the bottle open over there, buddy. <laughs> yeah, just do that more smooth next time. Found <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> Matt's being obnoxious, which I guess I should come to expect that every day. Um, this is our first uh, bottle of the month, isn't it? Probably. I think so. Um, so to continue Flagship February again, we're supporting all our flagship beers. We're going to be drinking Fat Tire from New Belgium. Um, easy drinking Amber Ale, Colorado, 100% employee owned, uh, is New Belgium. Uh, 5.2 ABV, 22 IBUs. What? I love the way you said that. 100% employee owned is New Belgium. <laughs> it's like somebody asks your name, you say, Nuzinski, Adam. Well, I mean, if you're waiting in line at the DMV, yeah. They say, Musinski, <laughs> And you say, hey, Adam. Hey, Mizzle, what up, though? <laughs> 100% employee owned is New Belgium. <laughs> I was going through it. I'm just like <laughs> skipping over words, and I'm like, I can't just say 100% employee owned because they employee owned what? what? What do they own? Do they own bikes? I hope so. I hope the, the employees own their own bikes. I hope they're going to take a mortgage on their bikes. That'd be bad. Good. This beer is. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, continue your explanation. It's on you now. <laughs> I'm done. Um, so <laughs> you got nothing, do you? <laughs> oh, of course I do. So for a lot of people out there, New Belgium's Fat Tire was one of the first crafts that uh, got them introduced to the entire genre of what craft beer mm-hmm. really can be. I mean, it's an easy drinking red beer. This is one for me after coming out of the coffers of your Newcastles and your your Smittics and stuff like that, the import beers. And this was a good transition beer because it's not real heavy, it's not real malty, it's not real hoppy. I mean, it's a well-balanced, easy-drinking red ale. Um, and it's been around for decades for a reason, mm-hmm. on the original recipes from New Belgium. Um, so it's it is, this is about as flagship as you can get. For beers in America, exactly, exactly. Kim and her team—they do a great job. Um, obviously, it, it's this is a super fresh one as well. Um, so good for four or five months. Fantastic beer. Again, it, it's just one of the things that goes back to show where these craft roots, where our craft beer roots came from. And this, this is right here. This is one of them, man. It's employee owned. They've been making beer for twenty three years or something. It is now. So go out there, grab a fat tire. When's the last time you guys had a fat tire? Seriously, go out there, grab one. They're good. It's a good beer. No Shortly, gonna... too, you're going to see brand new graphics from New Belgium, yep. um, reinventing the whole fat tire look. Um, it's available in a wide variety of packages between bottles and cans and draft, and it's all over all sorts of merchandise and memorabilia. I mean, this is this is one of the flagship beers of the U.S., so it's never going away. When you, when you talk it. craft beer and where it started... Here, it's right here, man. It's it's Fat Tire, 100%. Uh, Fat Tire, Sierra Nevada Pale Nail, Sam Adams, Boston Lager. Bell's Amber. Yep. That's it. KZU South. You know, it's it's these simple beers that stop drinking triple hop, backwards, milky, sour, pineapple, flour, mortar, sauce beer. Mmm. That sounds delicious. <laughs> On nitro. <laughs> like, no. Just, just drink a damn good beer. And this is what Fat Tire is. It's just a damn good beer. Start to finish. So. And they got cool bottles. Cheers. All right. Back You're going to have to cut out that audio because that cheers is pretty sweet. Remind me to do that. I've been meaning to <laughs> re-listen all our episodes and cut out the good Ooh. audio. The problem is our audio is so good, I don't have time to cut it all out. <laughs> Oh, I needed that uplift. <laughs> I was um, feeling pretty down today before that. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad I could help. 
Oh, as we talk flagship beers, we also want to inform people of the market of craft beer and what is continuing to trend upwards is Brute IPAs. Um, a Brute IPA is brewed with champagne yeast, making it very dry. But Which is a complete 180 from two years ago when we were all New England juicy hazy. Now we're dry, clear, and New England juicy. Dry, clear, and not in New England. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> really, really describes that for everybody. Money. So, where we are located in the U.S., in Michigan, what we see is 90% of your beer styles start in the West Coast, start in Oregon, California, usually California. And slowly they make their march across the nation and it gets to the Midwest. Michigan's got so many breweries that some of them try to experiment early on with these new styles doesn't quite hit home, and eventually it starts to catch on, hence why New Englands are so popular in the state right now. Where New Englands are not as popular anymore is on the West Coast, where they're starting to make these drier IPAs. And we've got local breweries starting to experiment with the brutes. And in doing a little bit of research on them, a lot of them are made with champagne yeast, which if you ever had a brute champagne, imagine that in a beer, just hoppier, dry champagne. Um some of them, though, they are made with an ale yeast, but they use a special enzyme that completely breaks down the rest of the sugars and just makes it super, super dry. But you still get a good aspect of the juiciness of the hop in it. It's still very, very dry on the palate. So, I mean, that's one thing. There's different ways to make it that they're starting to experiment with now. But it's such a different style from what we're used to. I don't know what the longevity of this is going to be. What do you think? Michigan as a whole is I'm going to I'm going to get to you. I want to explain something. Michigan as a whole is 4 years and 9 months behind the West Coast. How okay. accurate is that 4 years <laughs> they're like, and 9 months? They're like, <laughs> so they're to, like 3 to 5 years basically behind the trends of the West Coast. Um, so the, I mean Juicy and New England quote IPAs were being made out there, you know, four or five years ago at this point. Now we're just getting into that here in Michigan the last couple of years. Um, so same with the brood IPAs. I mean, they're same timeline and everything. It just it happens there, and then a couple of years later it travels over here and happens in Michigan. Um, I think it's one of those trends that it's it's going to still be here. It it's not going anywhere. There's a lot of big breweries getting on the bandwagon and and shipping beers, you know, nationwide and. A lot of Michigan-owned breweries that are, that are making them. Is it going to be the boom that was Juicy Hazy New England? I don't believe so um, because that was so palate-friendly, I want to say is the correct mm-hmm. terminology, that you didn't have to like IPAs. You didn't have to like beer. You didn't have to only like cider. You didn't have to only like meads. It was able to reach all these particular palates and different palates that everyone went for it. The Brute IPA is a very good beer. I am at first I, I was not a huge fan of them as I drink more of them. I'm coming into it and I really enjoy them. And I think that's the way that it's gonna be. They're gonna find their place on the shelf. They're gonna be there. The people that like them are gonna drink them and the people that don't like them are not going to drink them. It's not going to be in Michigan at least a market changing style but it's going to be a style that's going to be around i believe what i've seen yeah yeah absolutely i mean it's what i've seen from what i'm able to look up as far as nationwide it's really gaining traction a lot of places obviously out west but um even down south and some of the eastern breweries are are starting to make waves with this this brute style but it is you look at our ipas that come out of the state. You got your two hearted um, 98 problems. You got your, your all day IPA beers like that, that are, they're refreshing. They're very floral. They're very hoppy. Um, You can taste a really good malt backbone with, with really fresh hops in it. Brute is not that it is. It is. It's almost, there's been debate whether there's actually a style of a Midwestern IPA. Because of the the types of hops that are always present in a lot of the beers that we make here in the Midwest, 
they're all very similar. They're all very refreshing, and they're not overpowering by any means, for the most part. And this is so different. And I, I don't I don't know what kind of traction this is going to really hold on to in Michigan. I, I love the style. I think they're great. Um, I think they're really cool. I think a lot of these breweries that sort of have ties out west, like Austin Brothers, they sort of experimented early on. And they might have been a little bit too soon to the game, but it gets the name out there. So I hope it sticks. I really hope it does, but I guess we'll see. Different isn't always bad. It's not, and I think this different is good because it's it's different enough. This is going to sound really stupid as I say it. I'm trying to think of the words to say it. It's different enough where it's not the same, but it's not completely different. You know what I mean? Like, it's still an IP at the end of the day. Like, it's different enough from everything that's going on that people are going to want to try it. People are going to want to drink true, it. True, true. But it's not completely out there that it's here and gone. You know, I always go back to Sours because Michigan and Sours is the same way. We're, we're, we're five years behind. You go to our geographical region here in mid-Michigan, we're a year behind, two, three years behind, basically, the rest of the state when it comes to Sours. Mm-hmm. You know, the Ann Arbor, the Detroit, the Grand Rapids market just blows up with them. We are still tap rooms with one maybe two maybe three at the most lines of sour beers and i think this has a little more traction than that at least in our geographical region but i think statewide it'll reach more people than the sours do i my money if i were to guess the next style that was going to get hot in michigan it would have been either farmhouse funky or sour beers Um, the goza in like a Goza or a, or a Berliner Weiss or um, just a Saison, something like that. I really thought those were going to start catching on. I mean, you see these breweries starting to make seasonals that are a, a sour beer, seasonals that are a, a, some sort of farmhouse ale, and it is not picking up steam like I thought it would because, you know, you go buy a bottle of sour beer, a lot of times it's stupid expensive. I think they're delicious, yeah. but I can't afford it. But you start getting these lower ABV easier to make ones where they're they're soured with with brett as opposed to a, a different strain of yeast and that's just going to sour the entire thing i mean it's it's cheaper and it's mm-hmm. it's better they're being brewed with more production in mind where they can use that barrel after they clean it yep. again they don't have to separate their buildings because of the bread and the yeast and, and all the other i can't even get all the technical jargon i don't, <laughs> I don't even pay attention to it to be completely honest with you i just like beer <laughs> um, but that that's what it is like and founders for those who don't know is coming out with again green zebra which is a watermelon sea salt goza oh, in a 15 no. pack can that's all i'm going to drink this summer so you'll find me with a green zebra 15 pack on my hand all summer long or if he's feeling poor maybe a couple natter days oh natter days <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> natter days i am Tasking our listeners with something. I just texted my good friend Jay Anderson about it as well. High Wire Brewing out of North Carolina. They make a Brute IPA. This has a limited brewery, so I don't know how well this is going to happen. It's called Give Me the Brute. Instead of Give Me the Loot, Give Me the Brute. I want some. All right. Someone get it. I will bring you on. We will bring you on. And we will drink this beer together and talk about it. But it sounds cool, and I want it in my tummy. <laughs> I want it in my tummy. I want Since it this is. adult I'm sitting next to. <sighs> yep. It's Matt's favorite. Feel good now? Yeah, I feel good. I feel good. Matt's favorite sport has officially started. Spring training is underway. Uh, pretty much every team's got a couple games on their belt. Uh, Tigers played two games today uh, in two different locations at the same time. You I think know why? Is... Because they're freaking crazy and they can split themselves in two and make it happen. No, it's because they have so many people on the roster they can do it. Uh, that was such a stupid joke. I wasn't even. I wouldn't even call it a joke. Just a misinterpretation of what's happening. A misinterpretation of reality. That's my bi- is... biography. <laughs> <laughs> That's our tagline. <laughs> dude, dude, it so is. It so is. <laughs> <laughs> Write that down before we forget. Um, so spring training has started, and there's been 
<laughs> a whole bunch of games. That's awesome. There's been a whole bunch of games already, and there's only two players that everybody keeps talking about, and that's Manny Machado and Bryce Harper. If you haven't heard yet, turn on news, any news, and you'll see that Manny Machado signed with the Padres for a 10-year, $300 million contract, which is the largest free agent contract ever in all the major sports. It's insane. Absolutely insane. So, Bryce Harper. More? Less? Same? So here's my thought. Manny Machado, much better defensive player than Bryce Harper. Bryce Harper has a much higher war or wins against replacement, if you want to use the advanced saver metrics. Um, His batting average is a little higher. His slugging percentage is way higher. Um, OBP, fairly similar. I don't think he's worth more as far as a player standpoint, but the way that baseball is trending where Bryce Harper's a name. He is a a name that's going to put butts in seats. Yep. So from that standpoint, he's probably going to end up with more. He's I don't know if it's true or not, but it's rumored that he's already turned down many $300 million plus dollar offers in this offseason, which – if that's true, that's insane. Absolutely insane. I want to know who he turned down because that's crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, and here's the thing. People say that's a ton of money, which it is. It absolutely is. Machado, he's going to average like $36,000 an hour for the next 10 years. Something stupid like that based on how average length of baseball games. Um, but you've got 162 games in the season. You've got 80 games played at home. You've, or excuse me, 81 games played at home. Um, that's 81 games where you're putting thousands of people in that stadium that's paying for these tickets. Yeah, the ticket prices are going up because they're signing these players. But you're still showing up because you want to see these players. Mm-hmm. So in a way, all you fans, myself included, we are responsible for them making so much damn money because we haven't boycotted the game. We're still going to the stadium. We're still showing up. We're paying paying for $10 beers and $6 hot dogs and paying $50 for a ticket so we can be in the lower bowl. I mean, it's it's an absurd amount of money to go to a baseball game, but we're still doing it, and that leads to this ability to sign these players for this much money. And it's not just baseball. It's every sport like that. Oh, absolutely. You know, and absolutely. T- until we start taking money from the owner's pockets, which we have the ability to do, they're going to keep paying them, and it's going to take millions and millions of people to do so to make that impact on those owners to make those changes. It's not going to happen. No, absolutely not. And people say, oh, baseball players get paid too much. Well, yeah, they get paid a ton of money, but their season is twice as long. So that's twice as many, at, at least twice as long. I mean, football is only 16 weeks. So this is an insane amount of revenue that these these teams are bringing in insane and that's why they're able to bankroll this insane in the cranium boy but yeah baseball starting up i'm super pumped crazy excited uh look forward to next week when some uh changes happening in uh, some of our programming you say program is this like public ass tv i guess no i don't know <clears throat> what's changing happening in our programming what with Matt. Oh, Matt's coming out with cool stuff, yo. Yo. <laughs> it's going to be neat once I figure out this technology. <laughs> we have a lot a lot of stuff coming down the pipeline. We're working hard. We, we I promise you. Half the time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. My favorite. Bear with us. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying. We're trying. We're only two people with full-time jobs, families, wives, everything. So take some time. Um my favorite segment, I think it's one of Matt's favorite segments as well, our top six. Um, we decided to hit home with this one and went top six Michigan vacation spots, um, cities, things to do, however you want to kind of word it. We kind of left it open for each is, each of us, is, each of us I <laughs> interpretation. Each of cacti us, is cacti. the word you're looking cacti. for. You know what's just funny? It totally was, too. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's like one other like common word, and it's not totally common, but like something I would know. It's not common because we don't have cactuses, cacti, cacti, excuse me, in Michigan. You already got it wrong. You were just on the show and you already got it wrong. Come on, man. 
Words are All hard. Right. Top six Michigan vacation destinations. I think you go first. I'll go first. Or I'll go first. Uh, I put the Alpena, Michigan area. A um, lot of cool campgrounds up there. Uh, and the nice part is, is basically the Alpena radius of once you get about 45 minutes or so outside of Alpena, you lose cell phone service. <laughs> it's beautiful. So <laughs> at least for me, a guy going on vacation trying to escape, you know, what we are attached to our phones 22 hours out of the day. Um, it's cool to get out there. And again, Austin Brothers Brewery, one of our favorite breweries here in the state of Michigan. They're up there too, rocking and rolling. They got great food, great environment over there. Go check them out. So Alpena, Michigan area. A lot of campgrounds, north, south, east, west. Uh, not east, but you'll get in the water. Never eat soggy waffles. That's what you tell me. <laughs> That's how you remember northeast. I know. <laughs> we had this conversation a while ago. We did? All right. Yeah, it was on the podcast. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> My number six is Munising, Michigan, up Ooh. in the UP. Ooh, you nice. ever been up there? I have. Oh, beautiful country up there. I mean, it's sites, no matter what time of the year it is. I recommend going in the fall because it's not too busy up there. It tends to get a little touristy. Um, but Color tours. What's that? Color tours. Oh, yeah. Color tours get brutal from even out of state, Wisconsin, Minnesota. Um, but there's not a ton to see. It's just relaxing environment. The great outdoors. Mm-hmm. Everybody's nicer because they have to be because there's not as many people. Because <laughs> that's the, how they make money is um, tourism. But, I mean, I love the UP in general. But Munich thing's a beautiful place to visit. If you ever get the opportunity to drive very far north, <laughs> do it. Lots of time. Uh, number five, I put Caseville. Um, Caseville's very sentimental to me. I spent Cheeseburger. lots of summers up there. My grandma actually used to have a cottage up there. Uh, there's a lot to do. I like I said, Cheeseburger. Um, there's downtown areas, there's bars, there's restaurants, you got the beach area and everything. There's If you want to go mountain biking or I just don't want to go mountains or like dirt bike riding or anything, there's tons of trails up there. Uh, it's a good time. Go check it out. Caseville, cheeseburger, August, end of August, middle of August, something like that. You get a lot of cheeseburgers. Money. My number five, the greater Grand Rapids area. Nice. I, I'm not a huge city person. I'm really not. Um, but I love going to Grand Rapids. I say greater Grand Rapids because I'm going to loop New Holland and Kalamazoo into that. Okay. I know they're all within like a half hour or 45 minutes yeah, or so. But, that's, that's fine. That's fine. Um, it's, it's a really booming area of our state. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people our age. And there's beer everywhere. So much beer. All the so beer. So much beer. All the beer. Like, 75% of the beer from our state comes from over there. And it's good. Well, I mean, that's 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 it. I mean, that's enough to go see it. <laughs> just beer. Just beer. Why? Be- beer. Grand Rapids, beer capital of the world. Matt Muse, why? Because beer. Yeah, I mean, it's... I'll write that one down, too. Because <laughs> beer. <laughs> We're looking for a tagline. Number four, Holt Lake. Um, my in-laws just purchased Kaj there last year. So we've spent a lot of time up there. Awesome golf, awesome food. Obviously, the lake. You can go out there on the ice if that is your your little shindig that you want to do. I'm not one to venture too far out on that. Um, <laughs> but I did. I did. I made it. I survived. Um, yeah, Holt Lake. And we're um, all proud fun. of you. Thank you. Number four. You know, back, back to back bigger cities here Detroit. Detroit? Downtown Detroit. I have no cities on my list. Well, that's why they're at the back end of my list. So I like <laughs> the thing is I like visiting these places. Oh yeah, you're yeah, from yeah. you're from a pretty the, yeah I'm from Metro Detroit. Yeah, so I don't mind going. So there. Yeah. I love visiting these areas because I can I get to leave. I don't have to stay, and it's nice. So I love going to Detroit, and especially I have some friends that live downtown. Nice and stay with them and bar hop and go to games and um, there's there's a ton to do. But there's almost so too much to do. You have to plan it out beforehand, and it's fun. Yeah. You do something different every time. Every time you go, that, that's true. I'm not a city at all. Like when we went to New York, my favorite part was leaving. <laughs> this was like it was fun while I was here. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> too many people. Absolutely. That's that's why I can never live there. I always I make you. Shane a drive. Yeah, yeah. I nice. say yeah. the nasty things. <laughs> uh, number three, I put the Keweenaw Peninsula. Uh, Eagle Harbor, Copper Harbor up there. Again, 
Uh, that's sentimental to me as well. I had family up there for the longest time up in Eagle Harbor, a town of maybe 100 people. Um, it's a 15-hour drive from the Metro Detroit area. You got 14, 13, 14 hours right here from Mid Michigan. Um, hell of a drive. It's God's country up the up there though. It's beautiful, copper country. Um, there's not much to do other than sit, drink, and relax. But that's a great vacation in my book. So <laughs> I like it. <laughs> um, my number three, Petoskey. Nice. Petoskey, Michigan is scenic. It's it's got a big city feel, but it's not a big city by any means. Um, it's right on the water. It's got the most beautiful softball field in the state of Michigan. <laughs> it is amazing, amazing field. And when I'm up there this summer, I'm going to take a picture and post it to our social media because it's, it's beautiful. It's awesome. It, you hit a home run, it goes in the lake. It's awesome. Uh, but on top of that, I mean, there's there's lots to do. I mean, there's breweries up there. There's um, lots of little shops you can go to. There's campgrounds. There's friends of ours. I was say, the downtown area is fantastic. Jake Stradling lives up there from Perrin. That's not from Perrin, formerly from Perrin. Go up there, give him a shout. Say, what's up, Jake? From Perrin. It's not from Perrin. <laughs> yeah. Petoskey's great. Campgrounds, food, downtown area is wonderful. Um, I spent a lot, a lot of time up there. That's actually my number two, so... I'm going to segment right back into that. All right. <laughs> yeah, that's my number. I love Petoskey. I love the area up there. Um, it's fantastic. So, number two for you now. <laughs> number <laughs> <That's all laughs> number two for me. Uh, Traverse City. Nice. Love Traverse City. So, uh, Shane and I, when we were dating, we would go up to Traverse, try to go up at least once a year and hit some vineyards whatnot. And um, we actually went up to Traverse City the weekend that we got engaged. We were up there. Um, we spent a lot of time in the, the old Mission Peninsula, a lot of those vineyards up there. Bowers Harbor, she loved it there. Oh, that's they had, money. They had dogs. Yep. My wife loves dogs. But we haven't been up there in a while, and it's you go up after 10 years, and you feel like you never left. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. Beautiful. I, I do love the TC area for sure. Uh, my number one is Mackinac Island. Um, go on, stay on the island for a couple of nights, man. It's fun. Uh, Chuck Wagon, it's literally a diner that is probably the size of this bar. Uh, it's not big. It can fit, seriously, probably 20 people in it, and it is fantastic food. Mary's for beer. They have a putt-putt course that is actual putt-putt, like on, not even, I guess not actual putt-putt, but actual mini golf. It's on greens. There's real grass. That's fun. You can uh, ride up to the airport. Um, Sunset Rock is beautiful. The Pink Pony. Woods Bar and Grill. You can go in, like, mini bowl. It's freaking fantastic. Um and a lot of trails. Um, everyone goes right downtown. No, get out of downtown. You get there. We went the, up there for the weekend on a Saturday. The first thing we did was make sandwiches and bolt out town. So it's fun. Um, I did have on my list as kind of should recommend Frankfurt. Frankfurt's awesome area as well. And then Mackinac City in the winter is really fun. If you ever want to go up somewhere and freeze your ass off uh, and see some cool things, that's where you go. Um. My number one, Higgins Lake. Nice. I go up there. I do cell service. I sleep better. I fish. So fresh. I drink, play cards, and that's it. That's it. That's it. That's all you need. The sweet luxuries of life, being alone with your thoughts and your family and your beer. That is and it. Your, and your whiskey and your fish. Maybe another cooler of beer. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Subscribe, rate, and listen. Apple Podcasts. Give us a review. We'll read it on there. We got a review from some weird person named Mel Musinski. A uh, funny show that touches on sports, beer, dad life, and other nonsense. That it, it describes us perfectly. Don't know who she is or who he is, but thank you for the review. We appreciate it. Thanks, Mel. You know, Mel sounds like a mechanic. Yeah, probably is like old scruffly dude or something. He's got a wiry white mustache. Yeah, missing yeah. some teeth. Probably. Well, uh, well, he's got all his main ones, but a few molders are missing. Yeah, yeah. For Bit sure. down a jawbreaker. Yeah. Exactly. I'm sleeping on the couch tonight. <laughs> Reach us by email, mattmusicgmail.com. Call or text 989-372-1391, 989-372-1391. Facebook, Instagram, at Twitter, at mattmuse, mattmuse.com. Again, all our links are on there. We'll be back on Monday. Thank you for listening. See ya. God, that's over.